to the Eltham Central Reserve for the grand final of under 14 ones between Panton Hill and Diamond Creek. And we're in a very interesting situation of the match. Panton Hill were all out yesterday for 99 and Diamond Creek are none for five. But you'd back Panton Hill at any situation because they're, we're on top of the ladder, they're a great team. But this will be a challenge to bowl them out a less than 98. First ball of day two from T. Gilmore at the northern end. We're about to start play. And that's it! Well, what a start! Excellent bowling by T. Gilmore. Bowling it short at Thompson, and he was able to get the bat on it. Thick, thick shoulder of the bat. He is caught by J. Jackson Bellingham. First ball of the day of Ty Gilmore. The score is one for five, Diamond Creek. Diamond Creek. New batsman is McLean. Gilmore to McLean. Oh, Pan and Hill lost their number one batsman in the batting order for zero. And day two, Thompson, their number one batsman, at for zero. Swing and a miss. from Bentley. Library end and welcome 
streaming for the first time today, not only our South Australian viewers from their country hour, which went for the entire yesterday, is statistician and special comments commentator Mark Bellingham. Hello Mark. Uh, good day uh, viewers, we're in the 10th over, Bentley bowling from the southern end to Lutter, pushes forward and cut off there by Bellingham before it had a chance to scoot through for a run. It's nearly time for a bowling change. We've had, uh, this is the sixth over today, we've had a wicket, but uh, for Pat and Hill they'll need to keep rotating the bowlers in order to um, get breakthroughs. They can't sit around and wait. They, uh, they can't afford to build the pressure, but these batsmen are content to see off the opening bowlers. Cinder bowling belling hands into attack. This could prove to be quite a good decision, but they'll have to uh, get uh, McLean off strike. You won't like bowling to the left hander. You want the right hander on strike, and so they'll be looking to um, not give the left hander a single. But if he takes it, it won't be a disaster. Both enders, George comes in for a ball. George doesn't often bowl to the left handers, so he may enjoy it, but we'll have to have a look. The bowling coming on is Andrade at the northern end. At the end of the 14th over, time of Africa 1 for 27. 
and the bowlers that they used today Gilmore 5 overs 1 for 8 Bentley 5 overs none for 4 Bellingham none for 6 off 2 and George none for 8 off 2 Lutter's on uh, 7 and McLean the left hander on 12 Changes at both ends as McDougal, right arm medium, comes on to bowl at the library end. Paul well fielding there, went through that one, and uh, one on to McLean. McLean facing McDougal, a Scottish battle. No run. McLean being very patient, not giving away any chances. McDougal in again. Bowls and cut away. There'll only be one. McDougal to Lutter. Oh, and he jams down on that one. Squeezes it out, no run. End of the over, and the score is... One for 32 off 60. Alchemade rolling to McLean. Forward. <laughs> Just pushes it out to point. And again to McLean. Bowls. Down leg side and call to wide. Trying to whip that one through square. No run. McLean on strike. Cuts. Beats the man at point. Running out halfway to the boundary, they'll come back for an easy two. Short, and they'll be buys. Mitchell not taking that one cleanly. They'll get two at least. Buys is the call. No run. End the over. The score is one for thirty seven. Off how many overs? Seventeen. At Dougal to Lutter. Neither batsman has put a foot wrong this morning, really. And no run. In he comes again. Bowls right on over the wicket. Lutter pushes that one away. Big wicket. No run. Nice and tight bowling, but uh, no penetration. No run. Short and out to backward point. Picked up by. No run. Oh, and a just short of the 
field. Yeah, oh, they haven't had many chances, and that wasn't a chance. Didn't go to hand, but uh, not able to hang on to it. Both batsmen have looked quite safe. Lutter facing McDougall. It's the end of the over. The score is 137 off 18. Gilmore back to bowl. No ball. Make that three no balls. Not a good start to this spell. Big cover drive there by McQueen. Two runs. Gilmore again. Played by McLean. Yeah. Come on, let go. Gilmore again. Down leg side and beaten the fine leg fieldsman. They've got one. That's all they'll get. Gilmore to Lutter. Clamps down that one. Squeezes it out to. Short his fine leg and they'll scamper through for a single. It's been an expensive over. Here comes Gilmore again. Northern end. Short. Pulled. At the end of the over. to bowl. Southern end. No response from the umpire. Buckland to Latter. Through the field. One to Latter.
and it uh, drinks on day two. Diamond Creek are 56 for one. Oh, oh, 126 deliveries, 21 overs. Yeah, only we got Thompson, Cook, Bellingham, Bob Gill on for zero. The not out batsmen are Latner and McLean. Still Buckland. Just had the drinks break. And he's bowling to Lutter. No ball. Been a lot of extras this morning. Yeah, there's uh, about 17 of them. Nice drive. not giving anything away. End of the over. Uh, 22 overs, 58 for one. Gilmore continuing. Flutter pushes around the corner, but easiest of signals. They really have to keep him on strike. They can't keep giving McLean the strike. Gilmore's second spell has been uh, rather loose and uh, his last two overs have conceded 13 runs. slips doesn't come to hand so two more runs we welcome back our South Australian viewers from their 12 hour marathon of the country hour and and he'll look to have given this match up all out for 98 and now Diamond Creek with only one wicket down are uh, two thirds of the way there.
this time at the library end, rolling to McLean. go. That is the end of McLean. McLean is out. Stumped Mitchell. Bold Bentley. So that There you go. That is the end of McLean. McLean is out. Stumped Mitchell. Bold Bentley. So that's the second wicket down. Diamond Creek are two wickets down. McLean is stumped. Mitchell. Bold Bentley. Four. Go Diamond Creek. 37. 37. So a very, very solid dependable knock from McLean it comes to an end and the new batsman's coming out. Bentley continuing. And that's the end of the over. The score now is two wickets for seven. And that's the end of that. Well, 
that is the end of Lufa. Lufa has been caught by Buckland, bold Bellingham for 17. End of that. Well, that is the end of Lufa. Lufa has been caught by Buckland, bold Bellingham for 17. It's now free down for 77, and that pressure that started off by getting the first wicket has gotten the second. They are now free down. So suddenly two new oh, no, batsmen no. on zero here. As some pressure built up by a flick by Mitchell has created two wickets and the two batsmen are in have been dismissed. And that's Yahoo! it! A bit of pressure! Well, the third, the third wicket in as many overs and the fourth down for Diamond Creek and the pressure is building up as they are now four for 79 here. The third wicket in as many overs and the fourth down for Diamond Creek and the pressure is building up as they are now four for 79 here. I am to continue at the library end to the new batsman, Harry. Paria. Harvey. Harvey, that's the one. John. gave it out and then had a chat to the other one and went for the other alternative. Oh, without any slips in play. That will go away for a couple. But all running, they only get two. Batsman stepping away from the ball.
Bell I am for the last over of his spell. Oh! Bat Jackson's famous quicker one where he basically bolted as a seam which has surprised the batsman. Just missing the off stump. Finished off his spell. Oh, fell short of the gully and was able to get it away. semi-finals twice that missed out. Last year they were fifth place and now in the grand final which victory looks almost impossible. back after lunch and we'll welcome back our South Australian viewers from their 90 minute special of the Country Hour as Ty Gilmore is going to continue at the Northern End.
it's 96 for 4 in the 39th over. McDougal is to continue to bowl. And only three more runs away from victory for Diamond Creek to win the under 14 1 Premiership against Pennville at the lovely Elfham Central Oval. Gilmore to bowl his last over. Into Pavia. Mitchell, Old McDougal for zero. And no, it was Pavia who was out stumped Mitchell, Old McDou <coughs> McDougal for uh, seven. So two new batsmen at the crease. One has faced one delivery, the other has not faced one. his first delivery. Thank you. 
over. He's conceded 14 runs for his 6 overs. 2 wickets. No? Chain to the bowling. Buckland bowling. He's bowled 3 overs and none for 6. picks up a wicket from his first ball and now Diamond Creek slowly coming to an end. So seven wickets down now. Leg breaker so now we might be going to mediums. Breaker, full toss up, just falling short of the fielder. Have a leg break. Oh, 
this is fun a lot. Well, Bentley figures with ni quite nice figures. Uh, 12 overs, 5 maidens, 2, 4, 16. That will be his figures if this over is a maiden. Well, when you think about how many wickets that they have now lost Diamond Creek, you'd think that this could have been a much more interesting competition if Peniel had made a few more runs. And then McLean would have been a real key to the result of the match. Kavanagh to continue. Right arm slow medium over the wicket at the north. Although this videotape won't be the most wanted to watch tape in the universe, it might be interesting just to look back on the years when all these players are grey old men to those strange times when Diamond Creek were actually a dominant side and Pandanil were not the world champions. It might be interesting to look back on those days and ask how did we lose that grand final. We won't actually have an answer, but at least we had to see it and maybe understand the olden days when Pandanil weren't at the top of the league. while still no one from Pandanil has played just crickets. Kavanagh bowling leg breaks. Oh, not bad bowling, plenty of flight, quick outside edge, not coming to hand, slip too far away and keyboard not reacting quick enough. And that's the end of that, so Kavanaugh picks up his second, and now Diamond Creek are eight wickets down. And That's the end of that, so Kavanaugh picks up his second, and now Diamond Creek are eight wickets down. Andrew Alkamard comes to have a ball here at the library end, as we see a train stopping in the middle of the bridge. Alkamadian to to continue into his third or fourth over.
الفقه The switch keepers now instead of T Gilmore will be keeping and instead of B Mitchell for some currently unexplained reason. Kavanaugh bowling leg breaks and off breaks to continue, waiting for the batsman to return his attire onto himself. Field closing. And more extra runs from behind the wicket that are a bit unnecessary. The only possible theory has been confirmed. Bradley Mitchell, a leg spin, is coming into bowl. The keeper, Gilmore, will not be standing up for the stumps properly, I don't He should be, but apparently isn't. With a Gully, an extra backward point, short cover, silly mid on, and a few other lakeside fielders. Whenever Bradley balls, it's a joke. You put five on the score. How many overs to go? Dougal to bowl at the northern end. Only a few overs to go before the 50 overs have been bowled in the day. So they're just going to be playing it out before the match presentation on Channel 8 Cricket. But of course our South Australian viewers won't get to watch this post-match presentation because they will be watching a movie length special of the country hour. Retaining his place in the comedy box is scorer, statistician, and special comments commentator Mark Bellingham. Hello, Mark. Did I ever tell you about the time I was staying at the uh, hotel in South Yang Yarra? And uh, in that hotel was the red hot chili peppers. Now, I don't know why I'm launching into this story at this particular time. But it might have something to do with the state of play and Bradley Mitchell bowling. At the moment it's Rowan McDougall bowling and there's uh, no, I thought he might have just got an edge to it. Wouldn't have mattered anyway as uh, substitute keeper Gilmore didn't hang on to it. But uh, things rolling along, I'd say they may even call the match off here at the completion of play. It does seem like uh, the captain of Panton Hill has conceded defeat, but but uh, if it was for me, I would be tempted to play on. Play on while there's a, they're only uh, 20 runs behind or so. Still worth a bit of a dash. Let's see if he agrees with my feet. <laughs> they nicely the ball. Ball on the ground. Looks suspicious, doesn't it? Yeah. Anyway, he's out. He's been given out. Well, we'll have to check with the action replay of that later on. Simply push pause, rewind, and play. And slow motion.
A nice see the ball. Ball on the ground. Looks suspicious, doesn't it? Yeah. Anyway, he's out. He's been given out. Nine wickets have fallen, so one to go, and then we'll see if they're playing on or the game has concluded. Well, maybe the umpires were just trying to uh, get the game over and done with, so they can go home, have a nice cup of tea, and get their money's worth. Not getting into the third day, though, as Jackson is going to replace Mitchell at the library end, with only one wicket in hand, and only a handful of overs left in the day's play, he's going to be in, uh, not quite lobbing it up, but no run at point. Only nine more minutes of tape left, so hopefully this won't go on for too much longer. Edging it through the gully, but safe area there. Well, this is coming to an end, but if you come up to Pannon Hill today, this afternoon, you'll be able to see the H Grand Final, as we'll see if they can chase down 200 runs to win their premiership in consecutive years, and we'll also see Bondi's last cricket match ever, the old, old man. And then on the 2nd of April is the presentation day. And Channel 8 will be having a special presentation of the special presentation on the 2nd of April. Bellingham in. Tempting a faster one, but didn't come on to the bat as quickly as n normally does. If you forgot to set your alarm properly and you ended up getting woken up at p.m. instead of a.m., or you're just very, very silly, you'll find that the match is almost over. As Hanel have been bowled out for 98, and Diamond Creek are on 9 for 120 or 30 odd. And for all our Greenland viewers, we will be replaying sections of this match uh, at the same time tomorrow morning. Channel 8 losing their sponsorship with the Highlight Editing Corporation. As anyone would know, last year, the famous event where Brownie hit the six, but we forgot to record. So that was a very disappointing moment. And we'll all be showing that during the winter. Or we'll be showing whatever we can, because we don't have a lot of money. McDougal to continue. Piercing the gap at cover. Now get a couple, you'd think. Yes. Uh, and two runs. back on for his third spell. He's going to be rolling to some batsmen. Haven't bothered checking their names. Think of that of the interest being lost continuously by Pandanil Skipper. as we are only in our last five minutes of this tape and if it turns out that this match continues past that five minutes then I'll have to get the other tape out which will be very annoying. No run. Back on to continue. Looks to be Kavanagh continuing all oh, his five overs, which you don't see that very often from Kavanagh these days. He's been mostly put as a opening batsman, but he's having a go at bowling. He hasn't been. I put him as a bowling around. Bowling's gone down the toilets. 
somewhat as big full tosser missed no run fielder backing up keeper having Gilmore as a keeper is a huge joke the only possible cause is that of his brother relations Kane and Jay both are keepers and reasonably good keepers but Gilmore because he's able to bowl reasonably well it just makes it a bit of a joke even if he has bowled all his overs no run when you think about all the past backup keepers in world and international cricket Dravid, Eunice Khan, Langer Milman Javit Meandad they've all not really been able to bowl although some of them are in different standards to others well this match is just droning on and on and on and now we've got another change of bowling we've got Alkamard having a bowl Andrew Alkamard bowled at the library end and that's the end of that no no ball so Dear me, this match just can't end as George catches the last wicket off a no ball. And making him pay, making us all pay very, very dearly with adding more runs to the board. It is yelling out one more wicket. One more wicket before we can all go home and have a cup of tea. No run. Well, there's not much left to be said. It hasn't already been said. hasn't already been said. Mitchell trying to taunt the batsman into a mistake. Not working so far. The batsman simply defending. We're only two minutes left in the tape. So let's hope that the last wicket falls or the umpires decide to go for the same option and call it quits. We've got our backup tape on standby there. So in case we get one minute and twenty seconds further into play as Bellingham is going to be bowling at the northern end we've got a backup tape to bowl more air as Batsman doesn't get it on the on the full as it dips on him quite nice bowling but one more run as a poor misfield a poor misfield in comparison to a very good misfield as the other guy the other end bats it out we are now 40 seconds left so just be drawing on and on and on That should be the end, and it is. So, Bellingham picks up the last wicket, caught Gilmore. We were very lucky that he wasn't to drop it. Bold Bellingham. So, that's the end, and will defeat be conceded? I'm not quite sure yet. We'll have to wait to find out. It appears that the match is going to continue.
and that's it. We're back with the footage here as Penn and Hill have decided to bet on, which means they'll have to force the outright victory to themselves to be able to claim the under 14 1 Premiership. And if they lose outright, or if it's drawn, then Diamond Creek shall win. And to continue their aggression, they've decided to open with T. Gilmore and B. Mitchell. Their two leading middle order, lower order batsmen. So they will have to bat through the day and then play their shots tomorrow to be able to set a target to be able to bowl Don Creek out. So it looks like we'll be coming back next week to see what will happen and it'll be likely that the game will go on the entire next Saturday so strap yourselves in because Channel 8 Broadcast Network is going to be here seeing the whole thing live and if you are our Channel 8 footage subscriber for the cricket then you will be able to see the whole thing live if not You'll have to see the replay, which will be presented on video, DVD, and cassette. That's right, cassette, where you'll get to see my commentary and the noises that the bat makes when hitting the ball without actually ever seeing the plays. Thrilling stuff there. skipper Bradley Mitchell plays his first ball to bowler Snell. Snell right arm medium first. Bradley Mitchell, who has an average of above 50 for the entire season. Plus his house injury made in the semi-final and the 20 odd runs he made the first innings. T. Gilmore averaging above 20, I think it's in the 30s actually. It was a very good season by him. He was able to bat down the order for the second half of the season along with opening the bowling with Bentley. Snell. Snell following a feet. No end. So with this decision by Coach Neil Anderson to bat on means that Pan Hill still have a very slim chance of claiming victory here. But they will have to score very quickly in the remaining 60 overs of the match. Probably scoring quite fast enough to get a lead, but giving themselves enough time to bowl out Diamond Creek, and not forgetting that deficit will, will eat up time to be able to chase it down, and it will eat up wickets. Maybe. But time definitely, so that's time that they need to be able to make up, but they can't make it up now. They need to survive. They need to stay out there for the rest of the day. It's not long to go now. Appears to be Crawford. Still no runs for Penn and Hill. But they won't care. They'll just want to bat it out. And the 
it'll be interesting who comes in next and with what type of attitude. Gilmore. No appeal. Obviously must have been very obvious. I deeply apologize folks. You didn't get to see those free runs. The remote wasn't working. Gilmore's now off the pair he was on. And off the mark. Mitchell not to do either one. Not yet, the other one. Not necessary, as he will face Crawford. Looks to be Alistair Bentley coming in next. Well, he's quite a versatile cricketer, especially as a batsman. Not particularly brilliant, won't smash hundreds, but he's able to stay out there. He's got very solid, hard hands defence, so he can be used as a night watchman of some sort. That's the end of the over. It's none for free. I've now been in this comedy box for a very long time and I'm running out of things to say. Hopefully this is going to be one or maybe even the last over forward slash S of the day. Because it's getting very, very slow. But the threat of losing a wicket still imminent in Pannon Hills. Agenda, they don't seem like they're going to lose it, and Diamond Creek don't look like they're going to take it either. This deadlock or stalemate looks to be played out as a draw, at least for today. Can't see who that is. to Gilmore. No run. Snell to continue to bowl. How long can this possibly last us? We're reaching closer and closer to noon. The middle of the day. The hottest part of the day. It's almost time to grab a nap and a cup of tea as to the end of the over. Still none for free. Still not the end of the day. Crawford. Wide. Scores goes to none for four. Mitchell zero. Gilmore free. That was destined for boundary. Even low. This game is very large and the grass is thick. That probably would have gone for Mitchell hit very hard. There's a reasonably large gap that you can see at a wide mid on. I don't think Mitchell would go for it, but he started to push one past the bowler, and, well, they got one run from it. Gilmore didn't want the second, when there could have been three if they had run really fast. I'm running out of things to say still. Now yeah, let's talk about the weather. Beautiful sunny day, not cloud in the sky. And I mean that literally, not just some very sick minded American figure of speech. Quite a beautiful day. It's a bit disappointing. You have to witness your home team be defeated. And it looks like, yes! They're going off, finally. Well, Pan and Hill will have to force the outright next day, which will probably be the Saturday. So, 
we'll see you there. But for now, that's Channel 8 at the Cricket saying, see you later, have a cup of tea, catch you next Saturday. Oh, sure.